How you doing everybody? Paul the Mauler Lazenby here coming from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia standing with a certified mixed martial arts legend, five-time UFC champion, the Croatian sensation Pat Miletic. Pat, thank you very much for joining me here. Good to be, good to be here, Paul. And first and foremost, why don't you tell us what brings you to Vancouver? You know, I was up here for the uh, MMA Expo, hung out and uh, taught, taught a little bit for the Warrior Paradise Retreat. And uh, Jake Shields was there, Gilbert Melendez, myself, and a couple other guys, uh, Sean Tompkins. And uh, you and I attended the, uh, the uh, benefit for anti-bullying that Sean Tompkins put on, so I've had a, a great time here. And then you and I attended the Roxy later on, which is absolutely all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> but uh, one question that's been on my mind for a while, and I'm sure a lot of other people are, are thinking it too, because the Militich fight team has been an integral part of mixed martial arts pretty much from the inception of the UFC onward. You produce multiple uh, UFC champions. What is the current state? of the Militage Fighting Systems team because we've seen a lot of the Militage members branch off in their own directions. Right, right. Well, yeah, a lot of the senior guys in, in, in wrestling, in that mentality, you know, you saw a lot of guys like Dan Gable who, you know, my childhood idol who produced a lot of great wrestlers. Those guys went out and are now coaching at a lot of the major organizations, or the major uh, NCAA, Big Ten schools, Big Eight schools, Big uh, Division One colleges. So it's kind of the natural progression of the mentality. We train guys, I trained a lot of the, you know, the Matthews, Jens Pulvers, all those guys for a decade or so, uh, each guy. And then they went out and, and spread their own wings and did their own thing. And that's, that's, that's uh, you know, you can't expect guys to stay with you forever, number one. But two, I've gotten busy with, uh, you know, doing broadcast work and uh, writing TV show concepts and hosting shows and training military and law enforcement. And at, at some point I say, I've reached my goals as a fighter, as a coach, time to, uh, time to spread my wings, do some other stuff that I've wanted to do for a long time and actually eat dinner with my family. So it's it's nice to spend time with the kids. Cool. Now, you mentioned your broadcasting work. Uh, you're an integral part of the Strike Force broadcasting team. Uh, what kind of a transition period was it? What kind of a learning curve was there going from being a fighter who occasionally sat in on a broadcast crew to being a guy who's a major part of that crew and expected to carry his weight through the entire broadcast? Right. Well, trying to keep up with Mauro Ronaldo number one, was kind of tough. The guy could talk. But. Yeah, yeah. We, we all know about that. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, shut up once in a while, Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Right, but you know, the fighting helped me a lot in the knowledge base, obviously, but I think more than anything, the coaching, explaining things to the fighters while they're fighting, game plans, building game plans leading up to the fights. Um, you know, if a fighter's listening to you, it's like playing Nintendo, right? If they're, if they're listening to you and they're winning their fight because of what you're saying, it's, it's literally like playing a video game. So I use that, I guess, to explain to the people at home what's going on, um, why this guy's doing what he's doing, what he's setting up, where I think he's going with the fight so that the fans understand where the fight's going and they, they, they become bigger fans and it creates new fans out of people that really don't understand the sport, um, the intricacies of the ground fighting, setups for striking, things like that. So I, I considered that pretty important, but the broadcast, the actual talking live on camera and, and stuff, luckily I've done a lot of interviews, but doing a live open is totally different. You know, I'm more terrified doing that than anything I've ever done in my life, every show. Um, and, uh, you know, the people at Showtime have helped me a lot develop, you know, my, my on-air presence, so to speak, I guess, and, and uh, had a little bit of faith in me, you know, so I'm thankful for that. Cool. Now, now, pertaining to your fighting career, you fought quite regularly up to 2002. That has been very sporadic since then. You came out of semi-retirement to fight Hensel Gracie. Uh, a couple of years ago, you fought Thomas Denny, knocked him out. Uh, you've also talked now and again semi-seriously about maybe fighting Frank Shamrock. Is this a sign that we haven't seen the last of Pat Militich in the cage? I would, you know, I would fight for the right name for the right money, but all the stuff that I have going on, it's, it's, um, it's tough to put your life on hold. Have your family hate you for two and a half months while you're training, you're a bear, you know, you, you, you really don't get along with people real well. Um, so it's, it's going to have to be a big name for a lot of money to put everything on hold in my life. Um, if I never fought again, I wouldn't be disappointed. I've reached the goals that I wanted to reach as a, as a fighter. But if I fought again, you know, a big name guy for the right money, I'd, I'd definitely do it. Now, Pat, you have had some Hollywood experience in the past, uh, working on the death and life of Bobby Z with Paul Walker. Uh, is there any more of that kind of work for you in the future? Um, yeah, actually, I've got a call a couple of weeks ago about working on a major motion picture. Uh, my favorite director, I, I'm not going to say yet, um, just because of, I haven't done it yet, so I'm not going to say that I'm doing it. But uh, a really big, uh, large budget film, and, and it should be a, a lot of fun. It's, like I say, one of my favorite directors, if not my favorite, and uh, so it, it'll be neat. So you're performing on that, or are you doing some behind the camera work as well? They want me to be a bad guy in it, um, but uh, you know, mostly choreography. Yeah, so some pretty sick, uh, 
sick fight scene stuff, like uh, really pretty, pretty brutal stuff, actually. So nice. Fun. I look forward to it. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for your time, Pat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And as always, this is Paul DeMola Lazenby wishing you happiness, health, and, oh! and a punch in the face.